So here's a question for you. Does hormone replacement therapy for menopause increase a woman's risk for breast cancer? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those resources are about hormones and hormone optimization. Well, breast cancer affects all of us. I can almost guarantee that you or a family member or a close friend or someone that you know or have heard about has experienced an issue with breast cancer. My wife walked through a breast cancer journey with a very close friend of hers about 10 years or so ago, and that did not go very well. Her friend actually passed away from breast cancer. And then a very close family member of my wife's also experienced breast cancer and had to have uh, multiple surgeries. She's doing fine now, but it was a very difficult time. So I deeply empathize with the plight of women who have experienced breast cancer. And also I understand that breast cancer can be a scary thing. But here's the question. Do hormones really cause or increase the risk of breast cancer? What I'd really like us to do is to take a look at what the science, what the research actually says, so that maybe we can uh, decide whether this is a reasonable thing to be afraid of or not. So back in about 2002, there were a number of headlines in newspapers, if you remember those, talking about breast cancer and the risk that's supposedly increased by taking hormone replacement therapy, or HRT. Now, almost all of the information in the public media, especially that has to do with hormones causing or increasing the risk of breast cancer comes from something called the Women's Health Initiative Study. The Women's Health Initiative was a very large multi-center trial, a randomized control trial that looked at 16,000 plus women in menopause, some of whom got hormones and some of whom did not. Well, the, the WHI was stopped abruptly because of what was perceived as a 26% increase in the risk for breast cancer among the women who took hormones. But I'd suggest that we might want to look really closely at what the report for the Women's Health Initiative actually says before we really jump to that conclusion that hormones cause breast cancer. The first thing we want to look at is which specific hormones did the women in the Women's Health Initiative take? Well, the first one that's listed in the report from the Women's Health Initiative uh, researchers is something called conjugated equine estrogens. Now, conjugated equine estrogens are a commercially available product. This comes in a, a tablet form called PremPro. It is actually something that is an estrogen from horse urine. As disgusting as that might sound, it's actually true. And those estrogens are effective at relieving menopause symptoms. And they've been used for uh, actually close to 80 years, uh, horse urine estrogens. In addition to those horse urine estrogens, these women also took something called medroxyprogesterone acetate, which is a, a powerful progesterone analog. It's sort of a super potent version of progesterone. It's not exactly the same as progesterone. So that combination is what was given to women in the Women's Health Initiative. There, the risk in the Women's Health Initiative was stated this way. The 26% increase in breast cancer observed in the estrogen plus progestin group almost reached statistical significance. And when we see that word almost, what it actually means is it didn't quite reach statistical significance. So uh, researchers have a set of statistics that they use to determine whether this result of the women receiving hormones and experiencing a slightly higher level of breast cancer was that caused by the hormones or was it possibly by chance? Well, the statistics in this report show that they can't really say that it was caused by the hormones. It was small enough, it was such a small number that it could be just by chance. So this report also states that the results do not necessarily apply to lower dosages of these hormones or to other formulations of oral estrogens and progestins. So it's been 20 years since the Women's Health Initiative was announced. What have we learned during that period of time? Well, first of all, there are two hormones, we call them estradiol and progesterone, that are much cleaner, 
They're much safer and they're much more effective in treating menopause symptoms. And the reason for that is because these two are exactly identical to the hormones that are produced by human ovaries. The hormones used in the Women's Health Initiative are not identical to the hormones produced by the human body. A meta-analysis is a conglomeration of multiple studies. This particular meta-analysis looks at 14 different studies, and it looks at estradiol therapy and the risk of breast cancer in both perimenopausal and menopausal women. The results of this study show that estradiol therapy combined with medroxyprogesterone, you'll remember that one from the Women's Health Initiative, that was related to an increased risk of breast cancer, which makes a lot of sense. There was a slightly increased risk of breast cancer in the Women's Health Initiative. Now, this meta-analysis goes on to say that estradiol therapy combined with progesterone, the same progesterone that's made by human ovaries, carries no risk. So this is the result of combining 14 studies together, 14 recent studies, all about estradiol and progesterone, showing that there's no risk for estradiol and progesterone as far as increasing breast cancer. Now, here's another study that was published in the mid-2000s called the E3N EPIC Cohort Study. This was a very large group, tens of thousands of women in France who were followed over a number of years, and these women took various types of hormone replacement therapy for their menopause symptoms. The results of this study showed that the risk of invasive breast cancer was significantly lower with estrogen progestogen HRTs containing progesterone. The bottom line is that the right hormones used in the right way are actually likely to reduce breast cancer risk rather than increasing it. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons, and you might want to click the little bell to get notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.